In today's video, we're going to be trying something a little different. RAID is used in many different enterprise services, mostly to do with data redundancy. But today, I wanted to see whether I can do it on a budget. Let's get straight into it. So before we get onto the main part of today's video, we're going to run through the different or main versions of RAID that there are, so you guys get a better understanding of what we're doing today. So starting off with the RAID 0. RAID 0 is the basic idea of running data across multiple disks so you get a large amount of storage. Now say we have these four 500 gig drives here, we would get a total space of two terabytes, but where the problems come in is the fact that if one of these drives fail, just one, all your data is gone because there is no redundancy between these drives so there is no way for this array to rebuild if one of these drives break or fail. And that's sort of where RAID 1 steps in. RAID 1 basically takes two drives and mirrors them so you get the same data on one and the same data on the other. So if one drive fails, you do still have that backup of all your data so it's not missing. Where it starts to get complicated is with RAID 5. RAID 5 takes all four of these disks, but well, actually it takes three of them giving you a total space of 1.5 terabytes and has this extra drive free for redundancy. So if one fails, this can easily swap in and rebuild all that data so you don't lose anything. The only problem is if another drive fails, that's your data gone because there is no way for it to rebuild after that. And RAID 10 is basically the best of both worlds with RAID 1 and RAID 0. You get one terabyte of storage with that extra mirror of one terabyte so if one of your drive fails, you do still have one terabyte of storage over here. Obviously, the main problem is if a drive fails in the other array, once this one's died, then you do lose your data again. But this doesn't really matter if you have large amounts of drives in a RAID 10 configuration. So now we've run through the main idea of RAID, we're going to get onto the main premise of today's video. I got all four of these drives these 500 gig Seagate laptop drives for free because a business upgraded to SSDs, they didn't need these anymore, so they sort of just chuck them out. Now, a benefit to these drives that I'm using today is that they actually spin at 7200 RPM, giving us a slight benefit over normal laptop drives which run at 5400 RPM. But yeah, we're going to be putting these into different RAID configurations and see which one comes out on top. So to test each of these different RAID RAID configurations, we're going to install Windows onto the different RAID configs. And to compare them, we're going to use Crystal Disk Mark. Overall, the RAID menu isn't too hard to navigate and basically tells you everything you need to do. So now that everything's done and we've got all our benchmark figures, let's see how they all compare. So we're going to start off with the safest RAID option there is, with the RAID 1. Essentially it's the safest option as you can get an exact clone onto two drives of your data, meaning that it's pretty hard to lose anything, unless, you know, both drives fail at the same time. It scored a read and write speed of about 143 megabytes per second, which is about on average and within the margin of error for the baseline reading of the drive alone. Next up we have RAID 10 with 1TB of raw storage along with an exact clone to two other drives. We pulled in a read speed of 270MB per second and with a write of about 247, which is roughly double the speeds we saw on the baseline reading. Now we have RAID 5 where things start to get a little interesting. The three main drives give us a total capacity of 1.5TB along with our spare drive for the redundancy. And even with the benefits of redundancy, it gave out an astonishing figure of 417 megabytes per second on the read. However, the write was a little lacking, pulling in just over 60 megabytes per second, which was a little underwhelming. But I don't think you can complain for the security of your data that you would receive with this setup. And to finish us off is the big one, the RAID 0 setup with all four drives striped together, giving us a raw capacity of two terabytes of storage, where we pulled in about 480 megabytes per second on the read and around 400 megabytes per second on the write, which I was absolutely blown away with when I saw. Of course though, 
It's pretty unsurprising in reality that the speeds of this setup were much better, with Raid 1, 5 and 10 all being pretty focused on redundancy. Raid 0 is for those who just really want to risk it all, to get as much performance as they can out of the hard drives, but of course there is a limit to where you can push it, as compared to my main boot drive on my main PC, an MX500 Crucial 1TB, which was able to pull in about 100 megabytes per second over the reads and writes of the RAID 0 config. So essentially in conclusion of all those benchmarks, all the different RAID configs have their own different benefits. RAID 0 is good for vast amounts of fast storage, RAID 1 is good for keeping a backup of just one drive, RAID 5 is good for both larger amounts of storage along with some redundancy, and RAID 10 is good for larger amounts of storage and a clone of all the data. So it really depends on what is best for your needs. So there you go, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, it was something new that I really wanted to try because obviously I have a budget audience out there who does want cheap storage on the masses, and obviously we can't go out and buy one, two, three petabytes of storage, so I hope this was at least interesting for some of you out there. I hope you enjoyed, I hope it was informative, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.